hello and welcome to another tutorial uh, again we're using Photoshop and this time I'm going to show you guys how to create this an apple that bites which is very scary we might do add edit the edges a bit more to make it softer but yeah this is what we're going to do we're going to bring in a image of a wild cat that's yawning or he's got his mouth open and then we're going to pop it in and then change the apple so it blends the top here so I'll just demonstrate make a new layer this will let me do that you don't need to copy this I'm just doing this for effect just show off so yeah as you can see here we just want to pull the apple out so it attaches to there and also out this way so it attaches by the bottom here and then with the mouth we're going to make it a bit red so do all that first of all you need your images I simply googled mine I will make the links available so first of all I selected my apple so I just googled red apple and I chose this one with a bit of shadow here just got my apple you can view the page or you can just right click and copy the image go into Photoshop hit file and new and I'm just gonna call this one Apple and what is done with my copied image is going to put in the height and width of my copied image so that's okay so I'm gonna hit okay and then I want to paste this in the best way to do this is either control V or if you're not familiar with the shortcuts edit and paste right here and it does the job you also notice you could also save the image and open it up by pasting it I don't have the lock that I usually get with these images if you do get the lock all you have to do is double click then press OK and that will make it a normal image or you can just copy the image and paste it in again both are good ways to do it now for the tiger image I just googled tiger roaring and we just scroll around and I went for this one over here you can choose different ones if you want to you don't have to do an apple you can choose a side one you could choose a side bit here What's, that's an interesting one a bit of a roar there that's a very good one as well but I want this one so I got my image going to right click copy image go into Photoshop and just like we did the Apple file new I'm gonna call this well we're not gonna we're gonna call this anything because we're not gonna save the tiger so I'm just gonna click OK and then file paste so now I got my images ready if I were to zoom in so if I go to window navigator this navigator pops up on the side I can use the little arrow down here to pull in and out of my image and we can see it's kind of fuzzy right at the start with our tiger image I want to select and just copy his mouth area this can be tricky at the best of times so I'm just gonna pull a little bit there we go that's a bit better they just fit in yeah that's pro that's fine nice 300 there depending on the size of the screen you may want to zoom in to a comfortable area that you are happy to work with this is fine for me now as I said my tiger is a bit fuzzy we can just sharpen this a little bit so I'm gonna go to filter sharpen sharpen as you can see it's just a little bit sharper maybe a bit much but it does the job I want it to do so now I want to select the area that I'm going to work with for my tiger you can either choose so if we go over to the toolbar it's the third one down it could be either lasso tool etc if I click and hold 
You can choose between the polygon lasso tool, but I'm going to go with the magnetic one. If you do find the magnetic one a bit too difficult, you can sh I would recommend going with the second one, but I'm going to do this the hard way and do the magnetic lasso tool. If done right, this can be a very handy tool because it automatically goes round the object nicely. So I'm going to start off at the top here and just every now and then just clicking oh dear unfortunately it doesn't help that my computer lags a bit so I'm just kind of guiding this round you can kind of see I don't know if you can see very well it's kind of following the shape I want to go for here so it's kind of following its mouth occasionally click here and there just to maintain control over what you are doing and you, what you're telling it to follow. The magnetic, la the magnetic lasso tool can be, as I said, rather tricky. Go off on a tangent. Do not worry if you accidentally select the wrong area. We can easily erase it or you can restart and do this all over again. So I'm just gonna... Oh. If you do make that mistake, if it does snap to here, just pull it out a little bit and just click. By clicking, you're creating little points and dictating where it follows. If you go a little bit wide, as I said, don't worry. Don't have to be precious with this. Can be a bit fiddly. And then we go back to the beginning. Am I back in the beginning yet? There we go. So I've selected the area that I want to work with. We can see that some little areas are rough. Not to worry, I can easily erase that and tweak it up later. So now I've got the mouth selected. I'm going to go to edit and copy. And then I'm going to open up my Apple image up here. With the Apple image, I want to then paste the mouth into here. We do this by going to edit paste. Let's hold that there. So paste or control V. And what that does, it creates a mouth for the tight well the tiger's mouth in there. Which we can easily work with now. So I'm just gonna try and turn that off. Unfortunately my computer is acting up a little bit because it doesn't like me recording. So now I want to move the mouth into place and manipulate it. To move the mouth Go to the second tool called the Marquee tool and then right click on the mouth and select Free Transform. This allows you to scale the mouth. Ooh, helps if I don't double click. If you double click, there you go. I can move the mouth into place. It's a bit thin, the mouth, for my liking. So I'm going to scale this out a bit. You can pull it out to a size that you feel happy with. I'm also going to rotate it just a smidge. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it around about there. So once you're happy, you can press Enter on your keyboard, or you can press Tick. Oh, just to say, if you want to stretch this, you hover over the little box here and pull. If you want to rotate, you hover on the outside until your cursor turns into kind of a arch, so it allows you to rotate the mouth. I'm going to click OK because I'm happy with my mouth the way it is. I'm going to zoom in with my navigator. You could also press Control and Enter. One thing I noticed with my mouth well, with my apple, it is a little not quite very sharp. Select the mouth, select not the mouth, the apple layer. So if you select the apple layer in your layers, go to filter, sharpen, sharpen edge, and just sharpens the edge a bit better there. So again, that's filter, sharpen, sharpen edges. So Clicking back onto the mouth layer, so that's this little layer here of the mouth and not the apple. We're going to manipulate the apple a little bit. We're going to manipulate the mouth and just clean up some certain areas here. 
So I've got to spend a little bit of time on that. I'm going to get my eraser tool, which is this little icon down here, or you can press E on your keyboard. Very much like the brush, I can change the size of this by right clicking and just increasing the size and changing the hardness of it so it's got a softer edge to it like so. But I want to make this quite a hard edge and quite a small brush and click on the preset brushes here. I just want to brush the edge of the tooth here. Just get rid of those horrible harsh edges there so it doesn't stand out as much. Right, the way I'm moving, I'm pressing and holding space on my keyboard and pulling. You can also pull the navigator window here just to change your viewpoint. Luckily for me, the ma mag no, magnetic lasso tool has done most of the work for me. I just gotta go and tweak the edges. Now, if we just got the edge of the mouth here, I want to change my brush to something a bit softer. So, I'm going to increase the size of it and change the hardness to zero. Just lightly brush. Oop. I'm just kind of dabbing here. I increase, decrease the size of a brush is a bit too big. Oop. And just change the hardness back down. There we go. If you make a mistake, you can always go back to your history. To go and look at your history, go to Window, History, now you can always go back in time if you feel, hmm, maybe I did a bit too much down there, so I'm going to go back in my history. But remember, your history can only go back so far. It looks like I've gone a bit too far, but not to worry. I can just dab it with a smaller brush. Just imagine you're just dabbing some water on there, so you don't have to click and drag, just click and press, dab, 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 dab. It's just softening the edge. Here and there, so that the edges just look not quite... There you go, so it kind of looks blended in there, with the apple. So that's not looking too bad at the moment, I'm just going to keep bit of harshness at the bottom down here. Again, dab, dab, dab. There we go. So now if I zoom out, if this program will allow me to... Oh, sorry. There we go. I have a little mistake there, a little hiccup with recording. If I zoom out, this is looking a lot better. Now, what we need to do next, we need to select an area of the apple and pull it out so I'll just draw this on new layer just so you understand. We're going to have to select this area and then pull it out so that it touches the top of the lip here. And then do the same for the bottom. So select an area, pull it out so it touches the bottom lip there. So I'm just going to delete my drawing there. So to do this, I'm going to use a mixture of a normal lasso tool and then the selection tool to get the right part of the apple that I want to manipulate. Also another thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to pull out this mouth a little bit, I'm going to get this move tool, which is this one here, because I just noticed there's a bit of red there, so just pull this out just a smidge. I can also use the arrow key, there we go. So I'm going to select this apple click on the apple layer 
So that's the layer with the little image of the apple. I'm going to go into my mine was the magnetic, magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to check, click hold and select the lasso tool. If I click on that, I then can randomly draw circles and it'll select that area. I want to draw a big circle around the apple. So, top of the apple, I'm just going to draw. Doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be tidy. There we go. But I don't want to select this white area here. I want to deselect that. To do that, I'm, with this area still selected, I'm going to go over to the lasso tool, click and hold, oops, not the lasso tool, the, the tool underneath it, click and hold and get the quick magic selection tool. In the tool panel at the top, you've got normal, plus, and minus. We want the minus tool, which is the last one here. That will enable us to subtract our selection thus deselecting the areas we don't want. With my brush selected, you can change the size of it, but I'm quite happy with it at 30. I'm just going to click and drag and just select the white area. As you can see, it's now, got, it's now no longer selecting that white area, but just the apple, which is exactly what I want. With just the apple selected now, I can go to Edit, copy and then edit again and paste. Now it may look like nothing has happened at all but if we look in our layers we can see that we've got this weird little red shape here. If I just use the move tool just to demonstrate you can see we have a little bit of apple spare. Because it's on top of the original it looks like nothing's been done. To pull this out, we're going to add an extent where well, we're going to use an extra feature in the free transform tool. I'm going to click on my selected tool, the marquee tool, the second tool in my toolbar. Right click on the red apple area, free transform. Now I can right click again and I got a whole new selection of different things I can do. I can rotate, I can flip, turn off free transform, scale, but the one we want is the warp tool. The warp tool can be quite tricky at times, but it gives you more control over your object that you selected and how you want to change and distort it. So make sure you click on warp. This checkered pattern should then appear. You can control each of these points and pull the image into any shape that you want. So I'm going to be doing a bit of that now. So I'm just going to pull the, this little white icon here. Just trying to coax that bit of apple into place. You have to do the same here. It's getting quite easy. This is getting a bit easier than I thought. You may want to put it down a bit. Give the impression it's got a bit of a lip there. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that because as we can see, it's pulled the apple, so it's kind of joining up with the lip there. Once you're happy with your morphing and your selection, you can press the little tick icon at the top and it'll keep the changed morph. I am very happy with this because it kind of gives the impression that the apple's pulling out, so the teeth are jutting out of the apple there. And now I'm going to repeat the last step and this time do it for the bottom. So I'm going to get, now first of all, I need to make sure I've selected the right layer because we're still working with the top chunk of apple. I need to make sure I've got the apple layer for the full apple selected. I'm going to go over to my lasso tool, which is the third tool down select the area that I want to work with by drawing a circle. The circle never has to be neat, it just has to be around the area you want to manipulate. Try not to make the circles too big or grab the shadow because that's really going to make things harder for you later. 
And now I'm going to get the fourth tool down, so that's one, two, three, four, which is the selection tool. Make sure it's set to minus, and then just click and drag over the white area just to get rid so it stops selecting the white area, so it's just the apple we're going to mess around with. Now, with our area selected, I want to copy and paste it. To do that, we're going to go over to Edit in the menu bar at the top here, Copy, and then Edit, Paste. Again, like before, it looks like nothing has happened, but if we look over our layers, we've got this new layer here with a little bit of red at the bottom. That means that that chunk is now on a new layer for us to manipulate. With the second tool selected, so that's the marquee tool here, I'm going to right click near the bottom, and probably you can't see it quite on my screen so I've got to zoom out a little bit. There you go. I'm going to right click and select free transform. And then right click and select the warp tool which allow me to warp the apple to the size that I want it. So just gonna click and drag this along a little bit. You can click on these little points here just to get the general shape that you want. But if you really pull it too much, you can see here we've got a bit of distortion there. So we don't want to do too much of that. Try and stick to just the sides here. So I'm just gonna it's all about playing around with it, and if you make a mistake and you want to go back to what you had, you can always click the Do Not Change icon here, which is a circle with a slash through it, and I'll just put the apple chunk back the way it was before we distorted it. There we go. I just want to give the impression of a bit of a lip here, so I'm quite happy with that. You've got the idea that there's a bit of a lip happening there with the apple, and that's stretching and kind of distorting. So I'm quite happy with that because it looks like it's stretching with the mouth. So I'm going to click OK, and there we go. So we got it so that it looks like the mouth is stretching out of the apple there, it's going to try and bite us, which is not very nice. One final thing we have to do, we've got to add a little bit of red to this because if we look at the teeth, they look a bit too, they've got a bit of a hint of green and red in there, or green and blue in there. We want to add a bit of red. So to do this, I'm going to add a little hint of red using the blending options. With the teeth layer, so this is this layer of the black icon here, I'm going to right click on it, oops, let's do it over here, and select blending options. A new window should appear giving me different options. So I'm going to try and move this to the side a bit so you can just about see the teeth. And the thing we want to do is color overlay. So if I click on the word color overlay, not only will it select color overlay, but it will also allow us the options to manipulate it. With the color overlay selected, I'm going to change this from normal to multiply. Now, there's still too much red in there, it's not really showing the other colors. So I'm going to turn down the occupancy just to blend it down a bit better. So, there we go. And just do it till you feel that's the right color for me. So I think 20 is a very nice color. And if you want to see the difference, just untick the color overlay and you can really see the difference. Click OK. And there you have it. You could probably tweak this up a bit better. I could probably ease up on the bottom lip that I just noticed it could do with a bit of a, a dab. 
there we go that's not too bad so there you go that is it that's how you add you make your apple that has a bite that is one scary apple you do not want to mess with hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to if you want to you could show you can post and show what kind of other fruit or food that uh, you can add mouse to or even eyes so have a go at this